While understanding the convolution, we have seen how to solve the questions and now as we have completed the convolution, it's time to practice some problems. So let's read our first problem. In our first problem, we need to find the output yt of an LTI system for the input and impulse response given below. You can see two waveforms. The first waveform is the waveform of input signal xt and the second waveform is the waveform of impulse response. However, the two waveforms are exactly same. They are identical. They are the waveforms of unit step signal and we are required to find out the output of an LTI system which we can easily obtain after performing the convolution between XT and HT and in this presentation I will explain you three different ways to find out the output YT. In the first method we will perform the convolution in a conventional way. In the second method we will use the Laplace transform and in the third method we will simply use the properties of convolution. So let's begin our solution and first we will see how to obtain the output using the conventional approach of convolution. So we already know the five steps involved in performing the convolution. The first step is to replace t by tau. It will give us the same waveform but here we will have x of tau and here we will have tau. In the same way we will replace t with tau. In this case also it will give us h of tau and here we will have tau. Once we have this we will fix x of tau and then we will perform the time reversal in h of tau. It will give us h minus tau. I will write down all these steps quickly. We have two signals xt and ht. We will first replace t by tau and it will give us x of tau and h of tau. After this we will fix x of tau and we will perform the time reversal. It will give us h minus tau and after this we will perform the shifting operation. The time shifting and it will give us h t minus tau. And we already know we cannot perform the time shifting with respect to minus tau. So it is important to take the negative sign out. We are left with tau and then we will perform the time shifting. And when you open this bracket, you will find it is equal to h t minus tau. So this is up to step number three. And after this, we will repeat step number four and step number five. In step number four, we will obtain x tau multiplied with h t minus tau. And after this, we will integrate from minus infinity to infinity x tau multiplied to h t minus tau with respect to tau. So these are the five steps and I will quickly plot the waveforms corresponding to each and every steps. In the first step we will replace t by tau. So we will have the waveform of x tau like this. And signal h tau will have the same waveform. So I will copy it and then paste it. This is the waveform of signal h tau, which is the impulse response of the LTI system we are having. And you can see both the waveforms are the waveform of unit step signal. So we are done with step number one. Now we will move to step number two in which we will perform the time reversal. We will fix x tau and we will perform the time reversal of signal h tau. So we will perform the time reversal and it will give us the waveform which is the mirror image of this waveform about the y axis. So the waveform will look like this and it is the waveform of h minus tau. So we are done with step number two. Now we will move to step number three in which we will perform the time shifting. We will perform the time shifting and we are considering T to be such that the signal waveform will shift towards the left. So let's perform the time shifting and our T will make the signal to shift towards the left. So the waveform 
will look something like this this instant of time is equal to t and the waveform is the waveform of signal h t minus tau so we are done with third step and now we will repeat fourth and fifth steps to repeat fourth and fifth steps it is important to mark down the instants of time at which there is change in the amplitude in x tau we will find out the instance of time at which there is change in the signal amplitude and there is only one such instant tau equal to zero is the instant at this instant you can see there is transition in the amplitude of the signal before tau equal to zero the signal was equal to zero and after tau equal to zero the signal is equal to one so this particular instant of time is very important to us because we want to save our time while following the conventional approach of convolution. We want to measure or determine the overlap of the two signals and to do this it is important to move signal h t minus tau towards the right because our signal x tau is fixed and when you move the waveform of h t minus tau towards the right by small small increments you will not find any different overlapping result because the signal x tau is zero from minus infinity to zero and small small increment between minus infinity to zero will give you the same result therefore it is important to mark down the time instant at which the signal value is changing so that we can directly move our signal h t minus tau beyond that point first we will calculate the overlap when t is less than zero and then we will calculate the overlap when t is greater than zero so there is no need to perform the small small increments that's why we have marked down this particular instant of time having the transition in the amplitude now we will move to step number four and to perform the multiplication between x tau and h t minus tau i will draw them together so let's quickly plot them this is the waveform of x tau multiplied to h t minus tau we can easily find out the multiplication result if we can plot them together i am considering the first case and in this case you can see t is less than zero this is tau this is the waveform of x tau and this waveform is fixed this is the waveform of h t minus tau and we are moving this waveform towards the right and we are considering the case in which t is less than zero this means we are considering all the instants of time between minus infinity and zero and for all those instants you can clearly see the product x tau h t minus tau is equal to zero so our product is equal to zero and output y t is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity the product of h tau h t minus tau product is zero so we will have integration of zero and we already know the integration of zero is equal to zero that's why the output y t is going to be zero and now we will consider the case number two in case number two t is greater than zero so let's quickly plot the waveform we know x tau is fixed so this is how the waveform of x tau will look and we know h t minus tau is moving towards the right and this time t is greater than zero so t will be somewhere here we have moved our signal h t minus tau up to this point so this is the waveform of h t minus tau now you can see there is overlap between the two signals so we can easily calculate the product now h tau multiplied to h t minus tau h t minus tau is equal to 1 x tau is equal to 1 so the product is also equal to 1 so we have the product we can calculate the output it is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity 1 d tau or it is equal to t so output y t is equal to t when t is greater than 0 so we have the output y t it is equal to 0 when t is less than 0 it is equal to t when t is greater than 0 and this is nothing but the ramp signal so this is the answer you can see 
the work involved in performing the convolution in your university examinations when they give you convolution problem then you have to perform it in this way but when you are appearing in some competitive exam then you can choose any way to find out your answer now in solution using the method number two we will use the laplace transform yt is equal to xt convolution ht we know this xt is equal to ut and ht is also equal to ut this is what we have now we will perform the laplace transform and we know the laplace transform of ut is equal to 1 by s so yt will become ys this is the laplace transform of output yt ut will have the laplace transform equal to 1 by s ut will have the laplace transform equal to 1 by s so we have 1 over s square this is the laplace transform of output ys now we want the answer in the time domain we want yt so we will perform the inverse laplace transform so we will have yt equal to rt because inverse laplace transform of 1 by s square is equal to rt so you can compare the work involved in method number two we have obtained the same answer in just two or three steps now we will use the property of convolution if you remember the property in which i told you if there is signal xt convoluted with unit step signal then the result of convolution is equal to integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau i have already proved this property so we will directly use it here in case of xt we have ut so ut convolution with ut is equal to integration minus infinity to t u tau d tau and we know the integration of unit step signal will give us the unit ramp signal so from here also we have obtained the same answer in very few steps so it is up to you which method you want to use and it is up to the condition or situation in which you are in for example you are appearing in some competitive exam and there are four options then definitely go for method number two or method number three don't follow the method number one it is very time consuming but when you have to write down the conventional paper you need to show your solution then definitely you can go for method number one so this is all for this lecture if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section in the coming presentations we will solve few more problems on convolution